Well, good evening, and welcome to worship at St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Dean, and I'll be leading in worship this evening. Before we begin, I ask, are there any prayers that we would like to offer to our God? Other than for snow and lots of it. Seeing none, we begin with our opening hymn, hymn 324, O Lord, how shall I meet you? Please rise for the sentences. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. Be our light and scatter the darkness. Please be seated for our next hymn, hymn 310. Arise, O Christian people.
Please rise for the confession of sin. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, our words, and in our deeds, and in all that we have not done. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. Let us rest in his peace until the rising of the sun, when we shall serve him in newness of life. Amen. Please be seated for our next hymn, hymn 318. Hark, a thrilling voice is sounding. Our Old Testament lesson for this evening is found in the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah, the ninth chapter, beginning at the sixth verse. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And this is the word of God. Our holy gospel lesson for this evening is found in the gospel according to St. Matthew. The first chapter beginning at the 18th verse and we read in Jesus' name, please rise. And hear the words of Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had a mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. And this is the word of God. 
Please be seated for our sermon hymn, hymn 317, When All the World Was Cursed. And let us pray. O Lord, may we be one with the apostolic church and have everything in common with them. Sit at the same communion table, break the same bread, and pray the same prayers to the same heavenly Father. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of Scripture before us this evening is found in the Acts of the Apostles, the second chapter, the 39th verse. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for whom the Lord our God will call. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen and dear redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. No one is to be excluded from God's house. Not the young, not the old, not the infirm, not the differently abled, not those of a different nationality, not those of a different race. No one is to be excluded from the house of God. Thus, as we look at our text for today, we need to understand its context. It is Pentecost Day. Peter is preaching to the people gathered in Jerusalem. These people included Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, Libya, Rome, Cretans, and Arabs. All of these people were present when Peter was proclaiming the good news about Jesus Christ on the day of Pentecost. And yet, while we know that the Word of God is meant for all people of all times, in all places, regardless of their station in life, 
Tonight I want to focus on one specific thing that Peter says. The promise is for you and your children. The promise that Peter is speaking of is the promise of full and free forgiveness of sins. Peter had just preached about this forgiveness and the people were thirsting for it. These people had lived under the law for quite some time and now they were hearing the gospel, perhaps for the first time in their lives, and they needed that gospel. For people everywhere need to hear about their Savior, Jesus Christ. All people need to hear how Jesus lived the perfect life in their place. Never once did he sin. Never once did he give in to the temptations of Satan. Instead, Jesus stood firm on the word of God and proclaimed that same word to all people. All people also need to hear that Jesus Christ died for the sins of all people. It was not a few select special group of people. No, Jesus died for all people of all time, of all places. He died for you. He died for me. He died for all those sins that we have committed in our lives. He died for those times that we were not willing to share God's word with another person because they were not like us. He died for those times that we took God's word and placed it in a little box and kept it away from those people. He died. And when he died, he paid for all of our sins. Three days later, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He rose to announce that he had defeated sin, death, and Satan. He rose, and now through faith in him, you too will rise. He rose. And now you know that your sins are forgiven. They are washed away in the blood of Christ, which was shed for you on that cross. And now, because of his resurrection, we have the promise of eternal life with him. Not because of the many things that we would do and not because we have earned it in any way. Rather, we have eternal life with Jesus because he earned it for us. And we take possession of that through faith. Yes, through faith in Jesus Christ, we know that heaven is ours. Through faith, we know that our sins are forgiven. Through faith, we know that the promise is for us and for our children, and for all people. Through faith, we are assured of our place in heaven. Now, knowing that promise, God thus wants you to share that message. And no, not everyone is going to be a pastor, or a teacher, or even work within the church proper, yet every single one of us will work within the capital C Christian church. We will each work within the Christian church, sharing our faith, building up others, helping with our time, our talents, and our treasures. We will be working for God because God has asked us to. And so it begs the question, when was the last time you took your faith and you shared that faith with your child? regardless of your or their age? When was the last time you told your children about Jesus Christ and everything that he means to you? I ask this because I remember sharing an activity that we did one night during youth group. I had asked the students, when was the last time, just out of the blue, that your parents told you that they loved you? Most of them could not remember the last time out of the blue not at bedtime and not before they were leaving for the day, just purely out of the blue that a parent had told them that they loved them. When I shared this account with the church council, I had a couple of gentlemen remark how their parents never told them that they loved them, short of a smack on the bottom or the back of the head. So it brings me to this point. If we don't tell our kids that we love them, what are we doing as parents? Secondly, and maybe a little more importantly, if we treat Jesus as we treat love, I have to imagine that it's been quite a while since you have actually spoken to your children about your Savior. And why then is that the case? Do you suppose that so long as you brought them to church, you fulfilled your obligation to them? Do you suppose that as long as you made sure that they went to St. John's Lutheran School or PLS, you did your part? If you raised your child 
Why would you not want to lavish on them the love, comfort, peace, and joy that you know because of your Savior, Jesus Christ? Why are you hiding it from them and keeping it a secret? When Peter was preaching on Pentecost, Peter did not say, as long as you hear this message and kind of mention it every now and then, you're good. No, Peter told you that this promise, this promise of salvation, this promise that God loves you is not only for you, but it is also for your children. And if that is the message that people receive, I cannot conceive of any reason why we would not want to shout that from the mountains to our children. Why would we want our children to grow up thinking that God is just someone that appears at church, but not in our houses? Why would we want our children thinking that Jesus is only important on Sundays and not any other day of the week? Why would we want our children growing up not knowing the love of their Savior? But that's often what we do. We make sure to bring our kids to church. Maybe we read them a devotion every now and then. But do we help them truly understand and appreciate the, the love, the, the comfort, joy, happiness, compassion, and, and just everything else that I feel and I know that I have from God and from my Savior, Jesus Christ? Well, my friends, now is your chance. With Christmas right around the corner, you have the perfect opportunity to tell your children and really anyone about how important your Savior is in your life. You have the perfect opportunity to let your family know about your Savior who lived in your place, who hung on the cross for your sins and then rose from the dead to assure you and them of their salvation. Think of it this way. This is your chance to tell your kids out of the blue how much you love them and how much God loves them. It doesn't have to be premeditated. It doesn't have to be planned out perfectly. It can be as simple as letting people know that you love them and that Jesus loves them too. I love you. And my love pales in comparison to the love that God has for you. And I need you to know these two things, that I love you and Jesus loves you. What a perfect gift to offer to your children this Christmas season. And so, my dear friends in Christ, the same promise that you know and have stored up in your heart, you can now take to others. You can take it to your friends, your family, your neighbors. The fact that their sins are forgiven because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and they too can have heaven. Just believe. Believe that Jesus Christ lived, died, and rose for them and they will stand with him for all eternity. And that is a promise for you and for all people. To God alone be the glory. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please be seated for our next hymn, hymn 315, Let the Earth Now Praise the Lord.
We now pause for our offering at this time. If you have not done so, I invite you to please fill out the friendship register located in your pew. Please rise for the Kyrie in prayers. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies, that we may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let us praise the Lord. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Please be seated then for our closing hymn, hymn 327, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Well, good evening again, and thank you very much for worshiping with us this evening. I do want to point out next Wednesday um, is our Christmas at the Cross, our Jesus Cares ministry program. It will start at 6.30 p.m., not 7, like a normal Wednesday night, so if you'd like to come and join us, um, lots of Christmas songs. We'll be hearing the Christmas story. It'll be a great time next Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Um, yes, ma'am. Sorry. I was told 6.30. Well, fine, maybe it'll be 7. We'll figure it out. We'll talk about it on Monday. 6.30 or 7. Surprise, we'll let you know. Watch Facebook. I've been advertising it at 6.30, so if I'm wrong, that's fine. We can change it, but we'll figure it out. We've got to meet Monday, so we'll hammer it out then. Any other announcements that I do not know about? Any more time changes? Seeing none, I pray the Lord is with you today and always.